Wow, am I super productive this week? <laughs> hey geeks, this is the Officially Unofficial Geek Channel, and this is a weekly comic review, and I'm your host, Carrie Quinn, and as you can see by my cat ears, I'm ready to talk business, and eventually we will be diving into the Catwoman number 30. Yes. This is why I wore the cat ears. <laughs> and because I like randomly wearing my cat ears every so often. I haven't done it on a video yet. So here we are. I'm wearing cat ears. I believe my kitties are nearby me. The actual real ones, not anything else. Not that that would be at all weird, Carrie. <sighs> anyway, so this week, um, the week of April 19th, where we have we have we have four comics to talk about. One of them is because I was not on the ball and did not get it. It came out last week, but I did not get it until this week. So um, that's why we're going to talk about it today. Yeah, because sometimes I'm not perfect. But oh well. I had heard about the existence of of this first comic. I'm going to talk about the comic that I was laid on here. I heard about the existence um, of this comic that it was going to be coming out. I heard about it uh, like a few weeks ago. Um, I made a trip outside of my normal range of uh, comic buying to... I live in northern Illinois, so uh, my boyfriend and I went to the grand state of Wisconsin. We went to Janesville, and we went to, uh, I believe it was called Kryptonite Collectibles. Um, very nice store. Not a lot comic-wise. Um, there were comics, obviously. That's why I ended up hearing about this. Um, but I... There wasn't... It was more of a gaming store and other collectibles, like figurines and, and, and that kind of stuff, and like clothes and, and, and everything like that. So, um, but definitely had like a wide array of, um, gaming and that kind of thing and, and collectibles. And I had to stop myself from buying a few things. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so here we are. Um, I went to Kryptonite Collectibles with my, my sweetheart in Janesville. And, um, I actually bought two comics that I did not end up reviewing on the channel that, um, if you are new, you don't know that I am a huge Doctor Who fan. So I bought two copies of Time Lord Victorious, uh, Time Lord, uh, Victorious, uh, Doctor Who, uh, comic. Um, I bought one and two, um, what I understood to be one and two, but, uh, they were both, uh, if I'm understanding correctly, they were both David Tennant tales, and um, I read them, and I didn't really want to talk about them on on the po uh, on the uh, show here on uh, the channel, um, but I did read them. Um, but the here we go, long story, even longer. Um, while I was there, the guy that was working there was actually a fellow Whovian, so um, he actually let me know that they were going to be coming out soon, um, in, in April, because it was still, I believe it was still March then. Uh, so in April, they were going to be coming out with a Missy line. And I found it. Okay, for those of you that don't know who Missy is, I will explain that thusly. Missy is... Basically, um, one of the more um, recent in incarnations of the Master. If you are familiar with Doctor Who at all, um, if you know about Doctor Who at all, but maybe you're a classic Whovian, um, Missy is um, basically what happens when the Master uh, regenerates into the body of a woman. As she says in Doctor Who, she couldn't very well go around calling herself the master anymore. So, uh, <laughs> I think she could have called herself the master, but 
that was how she introduced herself, how they introduced her in um, the Peter Capaldi era. And she came in um, right at the beginning of the Peter Capaldi era and it was like, who is this mysterious woman? Because they didn't come right out and say that she was the master. Um, it was just, who is this mysterious woman in this courtyard? Is this heaven or is this hell? You know, a lot of those things were kind of going on um, and people were talking about them like that. Um, trying to figure out who this this woman was. And then eventually, um, in the last few episodes of Peter Capaldi's first season as the Doctor, wonderful season, wonderful ending to the season. It was just absolutely beautiful. And, and Peter Capaldi is one of my favorites. And I think time will tell that he is actually probably one of the better Doctors um, of all time. But that's besides the point. <laughs> um, Missy... Uh, has become actually one of the more iconic um, versions of the Master. Um, one of the more, I would say, popular versions of the Master, in my opinion at least. Um, and she looks like a demented Mary Poppins. So how how can you lose? Uh, but yeah, so she has, um, I had heard about this. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to keep on the lookout for that. And I eventually did find it at my normal comic book shop. And I just snatched this baby up and, and now it's mine. And it is the Missy number one. Really cool cover here. Let me take it out of the plastic so I can show you. It's really cool. So I only have four comics to talk about this week. I can go ahead and kind of talk about these. I love how they're like chess pieces. Like the different doctors versus the different masters. So like you have different uh, of the masters here on this side. And then you have the different doctors here. And they're each doctors that have encountered a master in some way. So Missy... Oh my goodness. So Missy um, is also known to be one of the more mischievous um, doctors, but it's also Missy um, basically starts this episode or this, this issue, excuse me. Sorry, I had to pause for a second. My cat is messing with something. So if you hear noises, that's because he's playing with something weird that's noisy. Anyways... So, um, basically this, this issue is Missy, um, she's trying to get something that she wants, um, and she's basically tapping, uh, the only source of, um, uh, of help that she can think of to tap, and she has to, uh, basically infiltrate a storm cage in regards to do this. So, um... Missy, in order to find this person to get what she wants, um, and I, I won't give that away, you have to read the comic to get that, okay? Or read somebody else's spoiler in that, involving that, because I'm not going to tell you, you have to go read it. It's like the Time Life series, read the book, you know? Um, so, I will tell you that the way she gets into the storm cage to talk to who she has to talk to, is she pretends... That she's the doctor. That I will tell you. Because that is just typical Missy. And um, so she fools the person working the storm cage. She's just like, I'm one of the doctor's regenerations. <laughs> How's it going? You know? And um, she gets to the person she wants to speak to. And she continues this. Um, even with the person she speaks to. Which is kind of strange when you find out who she speaks to, and you're going to want to check that out um, with this issue, Missy number one, and there's going to be a Missy two. And what I really loved about this issue as well, it's run by Titan Comics, okay? So what I loved about this is this is, this is actually like the, the actual, um, the actual cover like the, the cover A. Um, I 
I will tell you a couple of my, uh, my issues that I did have. Now I'll tell you something. It's really cool because there's a t-shirt that's, um, this is mostly done because this whole series is being done, um, in honor of the 50th anniversary of the master. You see a few years back, we had the 50th anniversary of the doctor of Dr. Who, uh, that was back in, uh, the, the 2013. Yeah. Cause that was the 50th anniversary of Dr. Who. Um, but now we had the 50th anniversary here in 2021 of the master. The first time the master, uh, showed up on our screens and there's this really cool, this, um, Forbidden Planet, um, sci-fi cult entertainment, uh, site. It's forbiddenplanet.com. You can get different t-shirts of the masters. Um, and one of them is Missy where it says, say something nice, um, which is something that Missy would, would say. Um, she wants you to say something nice to her. She says she doesn't do anything screwy, um, or bad. So what I loved about this is that we had a gallery at, um, in the back where you could see the different covers that were available, the different variants, uh, alongside of the actual cover. Um, and then we also had like a little preview for the next one. So there is uh, a Missy 2. I'm unsure on exactly how many there will be of this series. Maybe it's, um, maybe it'll be a popular series for them and it will take off and they will do multiple ones. Um, but, um, I will say, um, one of my few gripes involving, uh, the comic and there's only, you know, very few, very little. In fact, probably only one. Um, my one gripe involving it is kind of, you see on the cover here, I know I put it back in the plastic, but you can definitely tell, like, if you know Doctor Who, if you know particularly the time period of, of Missy, um, you know that that is actually, like, this cover here, that's a pretty good representation of what she looks like. Um, she definitely, like, that is, that is really spot on involving the way Missy looks. And it was just my opinion that some of the art um, on the inside when it was basically like specifically with her face, um, her face kind of looked weird at some points. Like, like, um, it really wasn't like Missy enough. It seems weird. Like it, it wasn't, um, it looked like there was a lot of other pieces in, in any picture, right? And it looked like the person took the least amount of time on the face. <laughs> That's what it looked like to me. There's a lot of really cool stuff going on in the book art wise. But then you get to a point where there are some points where the face is spot on. Okay. Um, more than just the cover. But there's some points where it just seemed like, like, I'm going to put this face on here. And there you go. It's wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. It's done. Um, so that's one of my gripes involving it. Other than that, it was a good comic. I am probably going to check out number two because I love Missy and I love Dr. Who. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, the next one I'm going to talk about out of the four that I'm going to be talking about this week is Justice League number 60. Um, this one, I grabbed the variant cover as well. Um, I know some people like get really crazy about the variant covers. Um, I'm not really into that. I, I know I've mentioned that before on this channel. I'm not really into that for me. It's mostly what appeals to me in the moment. Cause like you could have like the Missy comic and, um, there was a variant available of that one uh, in the store that I went to, but it was like, that was the one that appealed to me was the actual like, um, cover a, um, this one is the variant with Justice League, and that's actually the one that appealed to me. That's the one I thought looked prettiest, to be honest. Um, it's really cool. I really like it. 
has has a good deal of of the the team that you're actually dealing with here. Now, there is a second tail in there's two tails here. You have one that's regular Justice League, and you have one that is Justice League Dark. Um, I really enjoyed the Justice League Dark one, um, but we'll get to that. Hold that thought for a second. Um, for varying reasons, I really love that. Now we have in the regular Justice League tale, Justice League 60, we have a continuation of what we had last month. Basically, it was continuing the tale. Um... You have a situation where um, uh, Black Adam has come across Naomi. You remember Naomi probably from before. Um, and then Superman's there and he's just like, you know what? Uh, we're going to back this. We're going to back the ship, the ship up um, because I think that there's something like, like, what is up with you, Black Adam? Because um, you're, you're not you're not yourself in, in, in a good way. And, um, so basically what's going down in this tale is, is, um, they're further trying to figure out what's going on with Naomi. And, uh, um, Superman takes both Naomi and Black Adam back to, uh, the Justice League and is like, what, what can we do here, guys? You know? And, um, Superman is really kind of, you know, going at, at, to to bat for for Black Adam, and uh, that's that's one of the things that that um, they really talk about in this in this issue. Um, but now let's talk about the 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 it's it's. It's good, and, and there's a there's a cliffhanger. There's a cliffhanger on on this one. Um, you also get um, special a special scene with um, a certain member of of the cast of characters that you have definitely seen um, in the comics before. Uh, I don't want to give it away because it's pretty cool um, when you see this person when you see this character. So I'm gonna leave that alone. Um, there's a really funny gag, uh, in the middle of it, um, involving, well, why does Batman always speak like that? And why does it seem like he's always like angry at Superman <laughs> because of the way he talks? So, um, there's that. Um, before I talk about Justice League Dark, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about one of my major things that did bother me a little bit. Um, if you're keeping up with the Superman comics, um, and you do see a lot of Superman in this because he is the one that brings Black Adam back to to talk to them. And, and so he is, throughout the, the whole thing, you know, like uh, um, trying to defend his, his position um, on the whole situation. Um, and the thing is, it's okay. So if you follow the Superman series... It's one of these things where it's like, okay, we're supposed to be sitting here thinking about how Superman is getting older. How um, his son, uh, John Jonathan John Kent, is, is basically going to be taking over, you know, eventually going to be taking over the, the helm of, of being the main Superman. We're supposed to be believing that he's getting older. The thing is, is if you look at the art here, and I've seen other people mention it, it's not just me, it's not just other people I've talked to, he looks like he's bloody 16. The art is not aging him at all. And it's one of those things where it's like, you know, okay, so if we're supposed to be believing that Superman is getting older and uh, things are harder for him, um, based on everything that we've seen in the Superman comic. He doesn't look it here. He really doesn't. And I'm, you know what, I'm going to see, I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to see if I can show you exactly what I mean here. Okay, so trying to find a really good example of babyface Superman here.
Okay, so like, there's this panel right here I'm trying to show you. He looks like he's 16. Babyface Superman. Babyface Superman. Okay, I'm just saying, it, it really doesn't take away too much from the story. Um, so it's not going to be something that's going to ruin the story for you. At all. It's not. Um, but baby, it, it's just one of those things where it's like, okay, the, the believability factor here is telling us that <laughs> the, the, the way Superman is dri drawn here, um, he has like no signs of getting older whatsoever at all in, in that book. Now, Justice League Dark. Okay, so the Justice League Dark, um, I don't have a lot of experience dealing with Justice League Dark, but from what I've heard about him, from what I've learned today, um, reading that comic, and um, from looking stuff up and talking to people, I think I really like Justice League Dark. I think I like that team. And... I'm going to tell you something. There's this moment in, in, in just, they've got like this whole thing where they're, they're like, um, the justice league is there too. And they're like talking amongst them, amongst themselves. Um, there's this funny moment where, um, black canary is like, Oh dear. Oh my God. I think we're about to have a moment where Superman agrees with green arrow. I want to tell you what they agree on. But the Justice League Dark is there. Justice League is there. And there's this, like, multi-panel page where everyone is talking, like, have, taking their turns talking. But every time it comes in on Batman, he's just like... Says nothing. He's just... I don't know why, and I probably thought that was funnier than I should have, but I did think it was funny. It was funny. Just the way, like, see, here's the deal. Go out and get Justice League 60. Get through the Justice League um, uh, issue. Then read the dark Justice League story in the back, and maybe you'll get why. Just several, like a multi-panel, like, like, boom, 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 okay? Of the Justice League kind of talking amongst themselves in, a, in front of the dark Justice League. <laughs> and you have Batman just every once in a while. See if you think it's funny and let me know, okay? Because I maybe, maybe I'm just weird and awkward, but I, for some reason, I just thought that was funny. That was hilarious. And, uh, there's another moment involving Batman that I thought was really funny where basically, um, it's the way he shuts someone down and I'm going to let you guys, <laughs> I'm going to let you guys look into that on your own. I don't want to give anything away because I am trying to be spoiler free with this video, um, as much as possible. Um, what I will say is there are cute moments involving a, basically a number of people, a number of characters in that issue. Um, and believe me, the, 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 the artwork involving Superman doesn't really take away from it. It was just kind of peculiar. So give it a shot. See if you like it. Let me know. Um, so the next issue that we're going to be talking about is... Nightwing! Nightwing 79. I took a drink and now I'm back. Nightwing 79. It is one of the better um, issues this week. Um, it's it's lovely. Lovely cover. As you can see. Um, so basically what we've got going on here is um, Nightwing... Dick Grayson, um, if you recall, has, in the last issue for Nightwing, has inherited a bunch of money, like a shit ton of money, from Alfred. Sorry, 
Spoiler alert, Alfred's dead. If you didn't know that already... Well, I'm sorry. Alfred's dead. It's very sad. And I don't want to talk about it very much. Because... Alfred's a motherfucker that should have left forever. Let me know what your thoughts are about that. Yeah. Anyways. And, and, and by the way, he left him like millions of dollars. Like, Dick Grayson ain't hurting for nothing at all anymore. But anyways, there's this really... Um, beautiful moment in the beginning where he's talking about all of his different influences in life and um, he's talking about his parents and just it's it kind of sets up the story like talking about how um, he's always had these influences and these supports in his life and he talks about you know his parents that the the flying Graysons um, he talks about um, how Batman was a father to him, how Bruce Wayne was a father to him, and how Alfred was also a father figure to him. And, um, that's really, if you didn't, if you didn't, um, <clears throat> get enough of that, um, wonderful, um, tear duct action with the last Nightwing, um, it hits you in the feels right in the beginning, and, um, then it backs off of you a bit. <laughs> um, but, so basically what Dick is going through right now is he's never, like, he doesn't know what to do with this money. He doesn't know what to do with this life now that he has, you know, he kind of has it back after everything that happened, um, before the Joker War and then during the Joker War and all that. You know, he's like, I've got my life back now, you know, and I've got all this money. What am I going to do with it? So, throughout this issue, um, especially in the beginning, Dick is trying to figure out what he wants to do uh, to help mankind, to help people, and to kind of make things better um, so that he can feel good about um, basically this really awesome, you know, position he's been put in by Alfred. So... There's some funny moments, um, and there's some, you know, not so funny moments and kind of harrowing moments, but he gets the idea that he knows exactly what he wants to do with the money. He wants to be the kind of person to help people, and he's going to be working on doing that. Uh, I mean, working on doing that, helping people outside of just, you know, being Nightwing, um, so he's going to be, be doing things with that. So, um, but that is just basically, that's just, that, that's, that's like just the base level of, of, of the purpose of this book. Um, there's some other shit going down and stuff that you probably want to pay attention to. It's going to have some reciprocating, um, like some some things that kind of add to other things that are going on, especially in the Gotham books going down the line. So um, for me to sit here and say it's a heartwarming tale about Dick figuring out um, what is he going to do with the billions of dollars he's inherited, um, to say that it's about that only really kind of, you know, skims the, the surface. Of, of what's going on because there's so much more to it than that and um, you gotta you gotta check it out to, to find out what I mean because again I'm not gonna fucking tell you so um, this leads us to um, my pick of the week um, <sighs> did you guess yet? Okay, so if it wasn't at all obvious, my pick of the week this week is the lovely Catwoman. Catwoman number 30. Let me just... I also got the variant cover on this one as well. 
um, because it was, like I said, quite simply the cover I preferred. And looking at it, it was just one of those things where I was like, okay, so if you read Catwoman number 29, you would know exactly <clears throat> why she's pictured this way. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about it. So when we last left Catwoman, um, she was hanging out much to her um, chagrin uh, with Edward Nigma, and um, she was basically um, alerted to the fact that uh, there is a problem um, involving poison ivy. Wow. Um, <clears throat> so basically this, this is an issue where, um, imagine you, you were, you were, um, emotionally, romantically attached to someone and you all of a sudden broke it off and you, um, both basically decided you were going to avoid each other for quite a while just to kind of like even out and then all of a sudden even though you've tried you you find yourself right smack dab in the middle of their shit again <laughs> and um that's basically what's happened to selena kyle in this book um she just wants to do her own thing she's she's in basically she's in alley town um, she refers to herself as the Queen of Alleytown, quite rightly. And she's trying to figure out what happened. She goes ahead and she gives uh, gets Edwin Nigma um, medical attention that he needs to survive um, some injury that he got in the previous issue. Um, just basically, she's sitting there and she's like, you're going to tell me everything you fucking know. Um, about what's been happening here. And especially, like, you need to tell me what happens, what's happening with poison, with poison ivy. And so he tells her. And this angers her a little bit. One, because, you know, it, she, poison ivy's in trouble, okay? And two, um, because <laughs> as much as she wants to, she, it, it basically it, it puts her right in the crosshairs of Bruce and uh, and Batman, and she and him made this agreement um, a while back that they were not going to deal with each other for a while. Um, obviously, um, for for obvious reasons. Um, so. She has to figure out what she's going to do involving that. Um, you also had the little issue of um, why was somebody shooting at them in the first place? Um, and that kind of stuff comes up. And I, I mean, to be completely honest with you, there's there's some stuff that, that, that um, I think people are still dealing with from... Um, prior to the launch of the Infinite Frontier that is still going on. And, um, yeah. So, I, I mean, basically, she has to make a decision what she's going to do in this situation. Is she going to do business as usual and butt out? Or is she going to look into this? And so that's that's what um, she's trying to figure out in this book. And the information she gets, um, you got to read it to, to, to believe it. So that's the pick of the week. Selena Kyle is absolutely fantastic character. Um, it's that whole like... Making the decision, you know, even though it's not the best for you, making the decision for the greater good, 
which is the kind of like what we had with, with Nightwing as well. Definitely what we have with Nightwing, actually. Um, but to me, it kind of means something more um, for someone that has plenty to lose um, by getting involved in a situation like this and still taking the taking or making the effort to get involved. So that's why I went ahead and and picked that as my pick of the week because it's someone that's not expected to get involved, um, shouldn't be getting involved, but has that fierce urgency of now. Um, you never know. She might find something pretty she likes along the way. Maybe. Um, but that's kind of why she got picked as the pick of the week. I'm definitely, obviously, keeping up with this one. I'm absolutely in love with this uh, series so far, um, where it's picking up with Catwoman. And um, I definitely see it having implications, implications, Jesus Christ, Carrie, implications throughout at least all the Gotham books, um, especially considering where we are with um, the Batman Urban Legends Red Hood story, um, where we at, we are, where we're at just in general um, with, um, different characters like Harley. Harley definitely would have something to say about um, anything involving Poison Ivy. Um, Batman, obviously. Um, Red Hood, obviously. Um, considering what we've been reading already. So, we'll see what happens with that one. But that was, those were my picks, uh, my comics for the week. And, um, and basically everything I think about them and, and trying to be as non-spoilery as possible while also trying to get you to want to read them. Um, but uh, that was for this week, for the week of April 19th, 2021. Um, we're going to go ahead and, and, and close this shit down. Um, obviously, you know um, where to find me. Come find me on Facebook. Find me at TikTok. Uh, at Officially Unofficial Geek. Um, I'll have the address for the Facebook down below. Please subscribe, like, tell your friends because I want to get out there. I want you guys to, to interact with me. I want to I wanna, I wanna do this thing here with the geekiness. That we all know and love. <sighs> Stay tuned. I'm going to be doing a main event um, video soon in regards to the Doctor Who. Um, the Doctor Who. We're going to do a Doctor Who centric episode um, in regards to the defense of the Timeless Child. So, if you've watched the most recent season of Doctor Who, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you have not watched the most season of Do most recent season of Doctor Who, I would recommend that you invest in HBO Max. I believe that season is already up on HBO Max, and you should be able to watch it. HBO Max has a lot of really cool shit. Apparently, um, it is like one of the coolest things ever. It has all this DC stuff. Has um, Warner, the setup of Warner Brothers, um, to do the double release on HBO Max of all their theatrical releases. So, um, instead of having to go to a movie theater and risk the plague, I actually got to watch, uh, Con, or excuse me, Godzilla vs. King Kong, um, in the privacy of my own home. As you may recall, I did a video about that, a little quick little little review of that. You can find that on the channel. You can check that out as well. You can check out any of my other uh, my other videos involving comics. I have a, a couple haul videos. I have a, um, a uh, unboxing of the Crazy Cat Lady box. Um, I'm working on trying to figure out what I want to do for my next unboxing. Um, maybe you guys have um, an idea. Maybe you have a suggestion. And I would love for you to comment 
below if you have any suggestions. Maybe there's a comic book series out there um, that isn't one of these run-of-the-mill DC or Marvel series that you're like, man, you know, based on your demeanor, Carrie, I think you would really fucking like it. So you should check out this and put a comment telling me that here or tell me on the Facebook. Either way, do it. Give me something I've never heard of before. Give me something to look into. Give me something to tear me away from my DC-ness of life and make me question everything. It's not that hard. Not really at all. So this is, this has been the Officially Unofficial Geek Podcast. Or excuse me, the Officially Unofficial, I keep on calling to the podcast even though I'm not doing that right now. Excuse me. This has been the Officially Unofficial Geek Channel comic review for this week. Please subscribe and like this video and uh, take care of each other. Uh, get a vaccination plan if you haven't already and um, geek out all over the place on something, whether it be comics, movies, video games, anything. Just take some time for yourself to geek out and have fun and take care of each other. Bye!